Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. You're welcome to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that what we'll hear, what we'll learn, what we'll study will be of tremendous benefit in every life in Jesus' name. Amen now. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for the time we're spending in your presence. Thank you for your word, the revelation of the truth. We pray, Lord, that this truth will dig deep into every heart, examine every heart, search every heart out, and help us, Lord, to be drawn to Calvary, where the heart will be cleansed and washed and transformed by the power of the cross in Jesus' name. We pray we'll not be hearers only, will be doers of the word. And the word will hear. The word will believe. The word will be. Will do good in every life in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Mark chapter 4. As we come to the study tonight, and we're reading as well as learning from Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through to 9. Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through to 9. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a sheep. And he sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hear, her king, behold, there went out his sword to sow. And it came to pass as a sword, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured each up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. And when, but when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit, but age, and other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. And brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. I will hear, I will believe, I will believe, and I will do the word of God. Tonight, as we look at verses 1 to 9, which we have read together, I'm talking to you on Christ's predicted revelation through parables. Christ's predicted revelation through parables. Look at verse 1. In verse 1, and he began again to teach by the wayside. That means he's been doing it before. Because he began again. What did he begin to do? To teach. To teach the word of God. Christ is the teacher come from God. And he taught essential truth for all time. Essential truth for today. Essential truth for tomorrow. Essential truth until he will come again. Look at what it says. Is a teacher come from God? We're looking at John chapter 3 
and I read from verse 2, John chapter 3, verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, Master, Teacher, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Thou art a teacher come from God. And his teaching was pointed. His teaching was purposeful. His teaching was practical. His teaching was perpetual. His teaching is for all time. Because it's a teacher that came from God. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5. A teacher come from God who taught the truth, who emphasized the truth, the truth for all time. Matthew chapter 5. I read from verse 2. And he opened his mouth and taught them. The Lord Jesus Christ at every opportunity. The Lord Jesus Christ before he crowd, before he multitude. That's what he always did. He opened his mouth and he taught the multitude. Mark chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 34. Mark chapter 6. We're reading from verse 34. It tells us in verse 34. And Jesus when he came out, he saw much people, and he was moved with compassion towards them, because they were sheep, not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. A teacher come from God, he was full of matters. He was full of the word. He was full of revelation. He came from God. And the Almighty God had told him and taught him and revealed to him the truth they will make known to the people. And at every opportunity, he had no time to entertain people. He had no time to just excite people because he had truth as he came from God and he taught them Many things we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at Luke chapter 13. Jesus Christ, the teacher, come from God. And it comes to you today. And it comes to teach you something essential that will prepare you for heaven. Something essential that will bring you back to God. Something essential that will make you stand and stand firm in the way of the Lord. In Luke chapter 13, reading from verse 22. Luke chapter 13, verse 22. Look at what it says. And when, and he went through the cities and the villages teaching he went through the cities teaching he went through the villages teaching he went everywhere in the land of israel and that's what he did teaching and journeying toward jerusalem then said one unto him lord at their few that be saved and he said unto them strive to enter in at the straight gate for many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able he says at this time you are receiving the teaching and you see the way to the kingdom of God that's the time to enter and you strive and you endeavor and you do your best to make sure that while the door is open you enter in because the time comes when people will try to enter in and they will not be able I pray you all enter in John chapter 7 I read from verse 45 John chapter 7 verse 45 then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees and they said unto them why have ye not brought him and the officers answered never man speak like this man never man talk like this man there has been no man from the time of Noah to the time of Abraham, from the time of Enoch, and to the time of Moses, from the time of David, to the time of the prophets, never man taught, never man spake, like this man, he brought the truth from heaven, saving truth, he brought the truth from heaven, sanctifying truth, he brought the truth from heaven, transforming truth, and when they went to go and arrest him, when they heard him, they say, you cannot arrest a man like this, this is a teacher come from heaven 
and I told you, as you know by yourself, that what he taught was essential truth, what he taught was eternal truth, what he taught was truth for all times. Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 35. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. What he came to teach, what he came to reveal, what he came to emphasize, what he came to reveal to the people still gets to our generation. Heaven has not passed away, the skies have not passed away, the earth has not passed away. And he said, even when heaven and earth would have passed away, my words will not pass away. That's why he said in Matthew chapter 28 verse 20, Matthew chapter 28 verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Everything he taught, everything he revealed, the truth he emphasized is giving us that, that truth now. And the truth is in the Bible. And he says we'll be teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. We're coming to Mark chapter 4. In Mark chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 2. Already we have learned that when he saw the great multitude, all he could do, all he intended to do, all he planned to do, all he actually did was to teach. Look at verse 2, chapter 4, verse 2. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, in his doctrine, he taught them many things in his doctrine. When he came, he wasn't offering suggestion. When he came, he wasn't a kind of a, having an opinion. When he came, he wasn't a, having proverbs of the world. He wasn't having all the things of the world in their debate, in their philosophy, that they came together and they'll say, I think, I feel, I suggest, I opine, I give my opinion. No, he came to teach the doctrine from heaven. Mark chapter 1, I read from verse 27. Mark chapter 1, verse 27, and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? He came to teach the doctrine from heaven. To them it was new. It wasn't something they had read about or heard about. In the old covenant, it was something new that pertained only to the new covenant. And I was so surprised. We're looking at Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, I read from verse 38. Mark chapter 12, verse 38, and he said unto them in his doctrine, it was peculiar to Christ. This is not the doctrine of Moses. This is not the doctrine of the elders. This is not the doctrine of traditionalists. This is Christ, and this is Christ's doctrine. And he said unto them in his doctrine, beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing, and love salutations in the market places. He wants the people. Then he tells us in verse 39, and the chief uh, and the chief uh, and the chief seats in the synagogues and in the uppermost uh, uppermost rooms at the feast. Verse 40, we devour widows' houses, and for he pretends make long prayers. These shall receive the greater damnation. And you'll see that he spoke openly, and he spoke fervently, and he spoke pointedly, and he spoke persuasively, and he told the people what they ought to hear, what they needed to hear. I'm reading from Luke chapter 4, verse 32. Luke chapter 4, verse 32. Luke chapter 4, verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine. 
He never did any other thing. He never said any other thing. He never taught any other thing. No opinion, no idea, no suggestion. Doctrine. The doctrine that touched the lives of the people. And the doctrine that revealed to them that you have seen. You cannot save yourself. I came from heaven so that you can be saved. He wasn't pointing them to any other personality that the Pharisees and the scribes would have done. He taught with authority and they were astonished at his doctrine. For his word was with power. His word was with power. John chapter 7. I read from verse 16. John chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 16. It says, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine. That's such a message. My doctrine is not mine. But his that sent me. He said, if I wanted to change it, I couldn't change it. If I wanted to modify it, I couldn't modify it. If I wanted to kind of twist it around, I couldn't do that. I have such respect and such honor for my Father in heaven who has given me the doctrine and has told me and has taught me what I shall say. And so he said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. That's what the Lord is telling us that what Jesus Christ has laid down, the teaching he has laid down, the doctrine he has laid down. We emphasize that, we stand by that, and we do not allow ourselves to be swayed by religious people of the land, of the age of the day. And we don't even allow other people around us to teach any other doctrine. We must abide and remain in the doctrine of Christ. First Timothy chapter 1. In First Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 3. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. He's saying, I besought you to, to still abide in your local church where you are. And don't be up and down. And don't leave the congregation. You have the ministry. You have the place. And you are set there. Abide. Where you are set for ministry. When I went into Macedonia. That thou mightest charge. Mightest compel. Mightest command. Might, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine as no other one can save except Christ. No other doctrine can save except the doctrine of Christ. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Meditate upon these things, the words of Christ, the teachings of Christ. All the things that Jesus came to reveal, the teacher come from heaven, everything that he puts across to us, meditate upon these things, give thyself holy to them, that thy profiting may, be, may appear to all. Take each unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Know that doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine don't bring in a human opinion elders tradition don't bring in the bait of philosophy take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee he that has an ear to hear let him hear is anybody hearing I said, anybody hearing Second John chapter 1? Second John chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Second John chapter 9, chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. How? Why? Because the doctrine of Christ was not his. The father who sent him told him what to say, 
what to teach, the word to emphasize. And so, if anyone will transgress and will not abide in the doctrine of Christ, then he doesn't abide in the doctrine of God. He doesn't love God. He doesn't reverence God. He doesn't fear God. He doesn't appreciate God. He doesn't uh, honor God. And because of that, he has not God. Look at that verse now again. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ is not the title, it's not the position, and it is not even how people speak, it's not their diction, it's not their eloquence, it's abiding in the doctrine of Christ. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If any if there come any unto you, apostle, bishop, pastor, reader clergy anyone if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine receive him not into your house neither bid him god's spirit for he that bideth him god's spirit is partaker of his evil deeds you'll not be a partaker of the evil deeds of people in jesus name Give me a good amen. We're coming back to Mark chapter 4. And as I read from verses 1 to 9, Christ's predicted revelation through parables. There are three things we're looking at as we go through uh, from verse 3 now all through to verse all through to verse 9. Number one, the use of parables by the Savior. The use of parables by the Savior. Before he came, the Old Testament prophets and Old Testament writers moved by the Holy Ghost. They had predicted and prophesied that he will teach by parables. The use of parables by the Savior. Point number two. The uniqueness and power of the seed. Israel went forth to sow and sowed the seed. The uniqueness of that seed, the power of that seed. Point number three is unveiling and perception of the soil. The soil on which the sower sowed. The soil on which the farmer planted different kinds of soil and different results that the yielded, the unveiling, the revealing, the uncovering, and the perception of the soil. Point number one, the use of parables by the Savior. Come to Mark chapter 4. And I read from verses 1 and 2. Mark chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into sheep and he sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the, by the land. Well, it's important for you to understand that Jesus taught in every place, every situation, there wasn't a building there, just by the seaside, only a boat, and he sat in the boat. The preacher sat, and then the audience they stood, and those who could sit on the ground sat on the ground. All that did not matter. What mattered was the doctrine and the message that came from heaven. Was true, and he taught them many things by parables and he taught them many things by parables he taught repentance he taught regeneration he taught righteousness he taught the hearing of the word and the doing of the word and everything he taught he taught them many things by parables the use of parables by the savior that had been predicted look at some 49 it was written concerning him that when he comes, he will teach, 
He will preach. He will reveal the mind of the Father through parables. Look at chapter 49 of the Psalms, verse 1. Hear this, O ye people, give ear, O ye inhabitants of the world. O ye inhabitants of the world. It's not limited to Israel. It was not limited to the Jews. All the inhabitants of the world, both low and high, both rich and poor together, he came to minister to everyone. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Look at this. I will incline my ear to a parable. And I will open the dark scene upon the heart. I will speak and I'll open the things that were hidden. And I will reveal it to the people, to the multitude, to the high and the low, to the small and the great, to the one down, to the one up. I reveal many things by parables. Psalm 78. In Psalm 78, verse 1 give ear O my people to my law my doctrine my teaching incline your ears to the words of my mouth I will open my mouth in a parable that was spoken of him that was predicted of him that when he comes when Messiah comes and when Christ comes when our Savior comes he will reveal his might his message his truth his revelation by parables. It says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. The things that were written in the Old Testament that uh, were kind of in the, in the dark and people didn't understand, it will open each to them and to us. In verse 3, which we have heard and, and, and known and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children showing to the generation to come the praises of the lord and his trace and his wonderful works which he has done and the new testament tells us that christ came to fulfill those verses we have read now in matthew chapter 13 Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 3. Matthew chapter 13, Jesus came to fulfill what had been predicted, that the teacher coming, the master coming, the rabbi coming, the Messiah coming, he will open his mouth in parables. Matthew chapter 13, verse 3, And he answered them, and he, he spake many things unto them, in parables, in parables, saying, Behold, Esau went forth to sow. Look at verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. That's what was predicted. He will come, he will teach many things, and many things that were hidden to people, he will open his mouth and he will teach the people in parables. It says in verse 24 that the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, while ministers slept, while preachers slept, while pastors slept, his enemy came and so tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. I pray we will not sleep. We will not slumber, especially those of us who are leaders in the church pastors in the church, preachers in the church that were supposed to teach the word of God without fear and without favor, teach the word of God without hiding anything so that the people who want to sow tears, they will not have chance in our church. You, don't, you want them to have chance? 
they will not have chance in our church. Verse 33, another parable, another parable speak ye unto them. No man ever thought like this. Moses never thought like this. David never thought like this. Another parable, another parable, another parable, another parable speak ye unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole be leavened. All these things speak Jesus unto the multitude in parables. All these things speak Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable speak he not unto them. Why? For certified that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. It came to fulfill prophecy. It had been predicted, it had been prophesied that when the Messiah comes, he will open his mouth in parables that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. That's why he taught in parables. That's why he said what he said. We're coming to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Reading from verse 33. This was his style predicted. And what he taught them in parables was the doctrine that the Father had given unto him. Mark chapter 4. Reading from verse 33. In verse 33, and with many such parables speak he the word unto them. Is the word that he speak, is the doctrine that he taught, is the revelation from the Father that he gave to them, but he did it in parables. It says, with many such parables speak he the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. Verse 34. But without a parable, speaking not unto them. Without a parable, he always had an illustration, a parable, a picture. And he always had something to say. He went from the known to the unknown. Of course, the knew about the farmers, how the farmers sow. And he took a lesson from that. And he revealed heavenly things to them. They knew how the, how the uh, fisherman will throw the net into the sea. And he took a message from that and revealed heaven unto them. He even said there were two ch there were children playing. Uh, and then they spoke to one another. We have drummed and you have not danced. He took a message from there and he revealed the doctrine from heaven. He said the king was making marriage for his son. And he invited people. He took a message from that, made it a parable, and then he spoke unto them. Many things he had to teach. And for them to understand, he went from what they knew to what they didn't know. In verse 34, but without a parable, speaking not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded, he interpreted, he applied all things to his disciples. Welcome to Mark chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 17. Mark chapter 7. Reading from verse 17. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. Whatever the disciples didn't understand, the interpretation, the meaning, the exposition, the application of that parable, the disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he says unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever sin from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? 
because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drought, purging all meat. And he said, That which cometh out of man, that defileth the man. For from within was it a preaching, a parable, he had told them, and he asked, was it a preaching to them now? Verse 21, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications coming from the heart, murders coming from the heart, sex, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. You will not be defiled. Luke chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 39. Luke chapter 6, we're reading from verse 39. The use of parables by the Savior in verse 39 of Luke chapter 6. And he spake a parable unto them. You see that? Many parables that he spoke to them were different meanings and different doctrines. Every area of doctrine that he covered, he spake another parable to them now. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? He was taking what they already knew. The same blind men going on the street but the blind will not lead the blind somebody who can see will lead the one who was blind but then now he says can the blind lead the blind shall they not both fall into the ditch the disciple is not above his master but everyone that is perfect that is matured that is cleansed that is perfected shall be as his master. And why beholdest, this is another parable, why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, brother, let me pull out the moat that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam, the fault, and the big evil that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's eye. I pray God will give us understanding. Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 15. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them. The parable is about take it that you are not filled in your heart with covetousness. The parable is to the point that a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? because I have no room where to bestow my, my fruits. And he said, this will I do. He a man of his own mind, of his own purpose, of his own plan, of his own project. That's what he thought about. This I will do. I will put down my bands and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Everything is mine, mine, mine. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to that man, thoughtless man, 
God said to him, a visionless man. God said to him, a blind man, blind to the future, blind to his own destiny. God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. I'm coming to point number two now. The uniqueness and power of the seed. The uniqueness and power of the seed. We're coming to Mark chapter 4, reading from verse 3. Mark chapter 4, verse 3. Hakim, behold, there went out a sower to sow. Look at verse 14. The sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. Luke chapter 8, verse 5. Luke chapter 8, verse 5. A sower went out to sow his seed. To sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devout it. Verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. The uniqueness of that seed and the power of that seed. We're reading from Proverbs chapter 30, reading from verse 5. Proverbs chapter 30, reading from verse 5. Every word of God is pure. The seed is the word. The seed is pure. The seed is sound. The seed is healthy. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Verse 6, add thou not unto his word. Don't modify the seed. Don't mutilate the seed. Don't try to have some other things added to the seed. Add thou not to his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. We're looking at Psalm 12, and I read from verse 6. Psalm 12, reading from verse 6. The seed is unique, and the seed is pure as well as powerful. Psalm 12, verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words. A silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. It's pure enough, perfect enough, correct. You don't have to modify. Verse 7, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, that thou, pres that thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The seed has its uniqueness. The word has its power. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 89. Verse 89, forever, O Lord, Thy word is settled in heaven. Please remember, Jesus said, The Father gave him the word, the word to preach, the word to teach, and the word to reveal to the people. And so he couldn't change it, he wouldn't change it forever. O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That word that is settled 
That's the word we are going to preach. Verse 140, Psalm 139, verse 140. Thy word is pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Thy word is pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Now we come to the New Testament in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of man, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. You receive the word of God because you read it from the word, you heard it from the word, you can see it yourself, and then you can see the application to your life. And you received it as the word of God, not as the words of men. That's why it works effectually in your heart. What does the word do? How unique is the word? What does this word do that no other thing can do? Opinions of men cannot do this. The ideas of men cannot do this. The tradition of men cannot do this. What is unique about the word? What is powerful about the word? Look at what it does. The seed, when it planted in you, saves you. The seed, the word, saves. First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 23. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which lives and abides forever. Can people be born again today? Yes. Because it wasn't Peter that made them born again. It was the word. It was the seed. And if the seed made them to be born again at that time, people can be born again today. You are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. And that word liveth, and that word abideth forever. That word heals. It's the word. Can people be healed today? Of course, yes. It's the word that healed in those days gone by. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Psalm 107. I'm reading from verse 20. Psalm 107, reading from verse 20, you accept the word, you believe the word, this is the word of God, and it works and it heals your body. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. You are healed in Jesus' name. The word saves the word heals, the word strengthens, the word strengthens, your weakness will vanish away. Look at First John chapter 2. I read from verse 14. First John chapter 2, verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him. That is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong ye are strong as you keep coming to the bible study strength upon strength in jesus name strong stronger in jesus name because ye are strong and the word of god abides in you the word of god is not taken away by the fowls of the air it abides in you the word of god is not scorched by the heat of the sun, 
the word of God abides in you. The word is not choked by sons. The word abides in you. The word is not taken away by the cares of this world. The word of God abides in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. The word searches us. And the word probes us. And the word examines us. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word searches and probes. It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word searches us out, the intentions of our heart, the designs of our heart, and the plans of our life, and the thoughts we have. The word searches us out to see whether it is wrong or whether it is right. The word sanctifies. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 26 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 that she might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word sanctified by the word sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth it says, by the washing, by the cleansing of the water of the word, that he may present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any sort of thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. All the wrinkles in your life, the word will cleanse away. All the impurity in your life, the Lord will cleanse away. And the inbred sin that is lodging there that will not allow you to fully, perfectly obey the word of God. The word will cleanse it out and purge it out in Jesus' name. Actually, the word cleanses. Psalm 119. The word cleanses us. It will cleanse you today. I said it will cleanse you today. Look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 3 and also reading from verse 9. In Psalm 119, verse 3, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. As long as the word abides in you, you will not do iniquity. Sin will take, in, sorry, sin, yes, will take the word from you. But the word will take sin out of you. Are you hear your amen? Verse 9, which, wherewith thou shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to thy word. Look at verse 11. Thy word have I heed in mine heart. Let every opinion of man go out of your heart. Let every suggestion of man go out of your heart. Let all those ideas you have read in novels go away from your heart. And let the word of God replace every opinion, every tradition, and every idea you live a righteous life. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word cleanses. The word empowers, empowers us, empowers us. In Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, I read from verse 44. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them. While Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard the word. They were hearing the word. 
the message had not even finished they received the word as the word of god not the words of men they received that word and because of their receptivity of that word the holy ghost came on them they were empowered and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as uh, came with peter because that on the gentiles also was poured out the gift of the holy ghost for they had them speak with tongues and magnify god then answered peter can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the holy ghost as well as we the word quickens us when we are dull almost dead lingering tired weary lukewarm the word comes and quickens us makes us alive brings new energy and new strength unto us that's what the word of god will do to you today john chapter 6 reading from verse 63 john chapter 6 verse 63 it is the spirit that quickness the flesh profiteth nothing the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the word comforts us you are going through some challenging times go back to the word you're going through some confusion go to the word the word comforts us in first thessalonians chapter 4 first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 18 wherefore comfort one another with these words comfort one another with these words the world the word builds us up builds us up makes us to grow you will grow grow taller grow higher grow stronger and it's the word that will do that i appreciate your coming to the bible study every time as you are coming you'll be growing as you are coming the word will be building you up the world the word the word of god builds up acts chapter 20 verse 32 acts chapter 20 verse 32 and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified the word feeds us if you're a real child of god you're thirsty you're hungry and it's the word that will feed us with this manna from heaven jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 and i will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding knowledge and understanding the lord will continue to feed us the word revives us revives us brings revival revival to our soul revival in our heart in jeremiah chapter 20 reading from verse 9 jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9 then said i then i said i will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name jeremiah was discouraged jeremiah was disheartened and he said there's no point it's in vain all this preaching preaching talking talking and teaching the word of god and prophesying it's not yielding any fruit and so i will not speak anymore in his name but 
Look at the middle of that verse. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was willing with forbearing and I could not stay. I could not keep quiet. Revival will come to your soul. The word fructifies. Fructifies. That word means the word makes you bear fruit. You will bear fruit. The word fructifies. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading from verse 10. It fructifies. Makes you bear fruit. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10. First, the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. This word will bear fruit in your heart. Bear fruit in your life. Bear fruit in your family. It will not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. The word conquers every enemy in your life the word conquers every challenge in your life the lord the word will conquer amen, amen. ephesians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 16 ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith remember that word faith faith Comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and the faith that conquers, the faith that overcomes, is the word that brings some pills and makes that faith to work in a dynamic way in your life. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You have overcome already. And then the Word abides forever. The Word abides forever. The Word abides forever. Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The words of Christ will not pass away. In your life, it will work. In your heart, it will work. In your ministry, it will work. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. For Peter, Chapter 1, First Peter chapter 1. I read from verse, uh, from verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass with the rest, and the flower thereof fadeth away. But the word of the Lord, tell me, the word of the Lord, say it aloud. The word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. You have seen from all that we have said how the word saves, how the word heals. How the word strengthens, how the word probes and searches, how the word sanctifies, how the word cleanses, how the word empowers, how the word quickens, how the word comforts, how the word builds up, 
how the word feeds, how the word revives, how the word fructifies, how the word conquers, how the word abides forever. You have seen the uniqueness of that siege and the power of that seed. Let's come back to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. We'll come to point number 3 now. The unveiling, the uncovering, and the understanding and perception of the soil. There's nothing wrong with the seed. If anybody hears and is not saved, there's nothing wrong with the seed. There's something wrong with the soil. If somebody hears and is not cleansed, nothing wrong with the seed, it's the soil. If somebody hears the word and is not delivered, there's nothing wrong with the seed, the seed abides forever. It is the kind of soil. That's what the Lord now spoke about, the different kinds of soil. Look at uh, Mark chapter 4, and I read here from verse 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 4. It says, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. You understand that? As you go to the farm, there are pathways going to the farm. And inside the farm, there are pathways. And the farmer walks on that pathway all the time. And because he's walking on that pathway all the time, the pathway is hardened because of the feet of the farmer and the feet of the sower and the feet of the strangers and the feet of other people pounding on that and walking on that every time. When many opinions are walking on your heart, pounding your heart, treading your heart, when many ideas are pounding and treading your heart, that heart becomes like the side way, like the wayside ground. It is hardened. Any seed that falls on it is staying on the surface. It will not sink into the soil because of many opinions treading there, many traditions treading there, many ideas treading there, and therefore that earth is solidified. And therefore you are not able to bring forth fruit. You will bring forth fruit. And then it says, the fowl of the air will just come and pick everything up. If you hear the word of God and you don't take care of the fowls of the air, after we finish the Bible study, it's talk, talk, talk. After you finish Sunday message, it's talk, talk, talk. After you finish revival, it's talk, talk, talk. And the fowls of the air and the opinions of men will come and take away what is planted in the heart. Nothing will be a fruit. But in your heart, in your life, something will be a fruit. The word of God will be a fruit. Look at Genesis chapter 15. I read from verse 11. Genesis chapter 15, verse 11. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. Abraham drove them away. Then spirits will come, Satan will come. He wants to take the word of God away from your heart. You'll do like Abraham, you'll drive them away. Look at Mark chapter 4. I'm reading from verses 5 and 6. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of heart. And then it says in verse 6, when the sun was up, it was scorched, because it had no root, it withered away. And the Lord is telling us about another kind of a ground, another kind of soil, another kind of heart. This is the kind of soil that has rocks, stones, and pebbles there. And the farmer didn't bother to take uh, the stones away. He just scattered the seeds here and there. Nothing wrong with the seed, but the soil on which that seed fell was hard. It was rocky. Look at Luke chapter 8, verse 6. Luke chapter 8, reading from verse 6. And some fell upon a rock, stony ground rocky ground and some fell upon a rock and as soon as it sprang up it withered away because it lacked moisture 
it lacked moisture there are people that hear the word of god they will not put moisture on that word by prayer by meditation and it just falls on the surface of their heart and it is superficial hearing it is emotional hearing i love that i appreciate that i'm excited by that i love the presentation i love the bible study but it doesn't go deep into the heart it's only emotional hearing and the lord said because it had no death everything then was choked up the word of God will not be choked up in your life. Will not fall on rocky ground in your life. In Jesus' name. Good, good. Amen. Jude. I'm reading from chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Jude, chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. These are spots in your face of charity. When the feast with you feeding themselves without fear clouds without water carried about with wings trees whose fruits wither they, they don't have depth in their understanding they don't have depth in their meditation of the word they come to the midst of the people of god and their spots in our feast and they are they are clouds without water and it says they are trees whose fruits wither it without fruit twice dead plucked up by the roots reaching waves of the sea foaming out their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved tell me the blackness of darkness forever if somebody is hearing the word of god he has the word of salvation it doesn't go deep into his heart there's no conviction there's no confession there's no conversion and there's no conduct that shows that this is a person that the word has turned his life around he hears he hears he hears and the sun chokes the word dries the word and scourges the word it has no fruit if he dies in that condition he might be coming to the study every time because it's not producing salvation transformation change of life he dies without having the hope of heaven that will not happen to you okay it will not happen to me come back to mark chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 7 mark chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 7. In verse 7, it tells us another kind of soil. Verse 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and yielded no fruit. The thorns came up, the thorns were in the heart. Anything entering in there, the thorns will choke everything. And so the seed, remember, the seed is good, the seed is pure, the doctrine is sound, but because of the kind of soil that seed fell into, that's why it says, the thorns should do it, and it yielded no fruit. You will yield fruit. Come to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. We're reading from verses 5 and 6. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the edge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down and i will lay it waste and it shall not be pruned nor digged but there shall come briars and thorns and i will also command the clouds that the rain no rain upon it when the vineyard is not yielding fruit when the hearers are not bringing for fruit god says that's what he's going to do to the heart and to the soil that has thorns 
that will not be your heart. I say that will not be our heart. Look at Hebrews chapter 6. I'm reading from verses 7 and 8. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. For the earth which drinketh in the rain, that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them, by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. The soil, the heart, that brings up thorns and thistles and briars, that heart is rejected and is nice unto cousin, whose end is to be born. That will not happen to me. I say that will not happen to me. It will not happen to any of us in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 30. Hearing the word of God, we have something to do about that. So that the fowls will not come and catch away and take away, snatch away the word that is sown. When you hear the word of God, we need to make sure that the heart is not a hardened soil so that the word will bring forth fruit. We need to make sure that the sons and the thistles and the briars are not on the heart so that our hearts will bear fruit. You will bear fruit. I will bear fruit. And look at Proverbs chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 30. I wait by the field of a slothful and of the by the vineyard of the man void of understanding the field of a lazy person lazy to pray lazy to meditate and lazy to water the word and lazy to bring forth fruit i wait by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding and lo it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it, and I received instruction. You receive instruction. And the instruction you receive, you will apply. And the word you apply will bring forth fruit to your life in Jesus' name. What instruction did he receive yet? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. You received instruction, your ground will not be like that. We'll come back to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. We're reading from verse 8. Mark chapter 4. We're reading from verse 8. Mark chapter 4, verse 8. And all that fell on good ground. Amen. Your heart will be good ground. The soil of your heart will be good ground. And all that fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some tell me some 30 and some tell me again 60 and some tell me finally and 130 60 100 it's the same seed but it's the kind of soil that made the difference is the same seed the same word and that word came into one heart he was saved he was converted he was transformed he was changed that same word came to another heart he was sanctified he was purified that same word came to another heart he was filled with the holy ghost and he bore fruit how is it that the land or the sun or this or the soil was like that because that soil was not wayside soil Anything that will come and tread on the word and harden the heart, 
the person is saying, I'll not give that chance. You're not going to give chance to any false that will take the word away from your heart in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 4. Galatians chapter 2 verse 4. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privately, privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Nobody will bring you to bondage again. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue, might abide, might remain, might bear fruit with you. The wayside soil, the wayside ground, dig it up. And as you dig it up, make it fertile. Not only that, the stony ground is broken up. Stony ground broken up. Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah chapter 62. I'm reading from verse 10. In Isaiah chapter 62, reading from verse 10, this is what you do to your heart. Any pebbles there, any stones there, any rocks there, gather them together. The stones carry them away. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 10, go through, go through. Go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. Cast off, cast off the highway. Gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Gather out the stones so that the seed of the word will not be coming upon stones and the seed will not be choked or, or, or scorched in your life, in your heart, in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. I read from verse 14. I shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Do that for yourself. Any stumbling block that will not allow the seed to bear fruit in your life, any habit, any action, any friend, any neighbor, any idea that will not allow the seed to take root in your life, take up those things. You'll bear fruit in Jesus' name. How about the thorns? What do you do to the thorns? Look at Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3. Thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your final ground and sow not among thorns. The thorns, the cares of this life. The thorns, the ideas that will choke the world. While the word is sown in your heart, do not sow among thorns. Break up your fallow ground. You will bear fruit. I will bear fruit. Much fruit. Multiplied fruit. Abundant fruit in Jesus' name. Hosea chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 12. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Amen. It will happen. And now your ground, the soil will be good ground. It will be a fruit. My, my heart will be good ground. I will bear fruit. Ezekiel chapter 17. Ezekiel chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 5. Ezekiel 17 verse 5. He took also of the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by great waters and set it 
as a willow tree. Look at verse 8. It was planted in a good soil. The word tonight is planted in a good soil. The word you hear is planted in a good soil. By great waters that it might bring forth branches and that it might bear fruit that it might be a goodly vine. You are bearing fruit. I said you are bearing fruit. Thirtyfold, sixtyfold, a hundredfold. Your roots will go down into the soil and your branches will go up into the heavens. Isaiah chapter 37. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 31. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downwards. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall, take, shall again take root downward. And the people who are here tonight, and the people who are hearing the word tonight, everyone without exception, my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter, you will take root downward and bear fruit upward. And bear fruit upward. You will bear fruit. Everyone will bear fruit. And the result of hearing the word will be seen, will be noticed, will be recognized in every life in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 4, reading here from verse 3, Hakeen, Behold, their weight is sore to sow. And that has happened tonight. The word has been spoken, and the word has been taught, and the word has been planted in your heart, sown in your heart. And it says that that seed is good, and that seed is pure, and that seed is sound. Then it says now, and all that fell in verse 8 on good ground. That's my heart. I say that's my heart. That's your heart in Jesus' name. All the spell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. You will increase. The power will increase in your life. Anointing will increase in your life. And the fruit will increase in your life. It increased and brought forth Psalm 30, Psalm 60, and Psalm 100. If you have not born any fruit before from tonight, thirtyfold in Jesus' name. If you have been bearing thirtyfold from tonight, sixtyfold in Jesus' name. If you have been bearing sixtyfold from tonight, a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Rise up and tell the Lord. Remember, when you hear the word, the soil is very important. The heart is very important. Look at the heart. Is it wayside? Is it wayside? You're going to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I dig it up. I'm going to dig it up and all the hardness of that soil, all the hardness of that side way, I'm going to give, dig it up and make it soft. Let your heart be soft and let your heart receive the word of God. If it's a, if it's a kind of a rocky ground and the stones are there, pick up the stones, pick up the stones and say, no, that opinion will not get to me again, that idea will not get to me again, that tradition will not get to me again and make sure that all the stones are gathered up and then you throw them away so that the seed will have a place to grow in your heart and in your life. If the thorns are there, you cut off those, those thorns. You root out those thorns and say, Lord, my heart will bear fruit. My life will bear fruit. I've heard the word of God. The word of God is sound. The seed is sound. I don't want anything to hinder my bearing fruit. Tell the Lord, let your heart be 
good soil, good soil, good soil. Any fowl come in, drive that fowl away. Any kind of a bird come in, drive that bird away. Any Satan, any Satanic idea, suggestion come in there, drive that away. That your heart will be a fruit. There will be salvation. There will be sanctification. There will be Holy Ghost baptism. There will be healing. There will be deliverance. And there will be fruitfulness in your life. Thirty-fold, sixty-fold, a hundredfold.